a simple moving average is literally you're taking 10 periods of data, dividing by 10, that's your average price, okay? An exponential moving average takes into account where price is at today. So it gives further weight on the most recent of the days and less weight on the further of the day. So if there's 10 periods, the first one, two, three are going to have significantly more weighting in where the moving average is versus the last nine, eight, seven. Good afternoon, traders. How are y'all doing today? I hope that you had an incredible weekend. I know I did. My uh, my wife surprised me. We went out this weekend to uh, a really cool place. So I am a uh, I'm a book nerd, like legit book nerd. Like behind the green screen here is actually just a wall of books. I probably have a thousand books at least. And um, I have like a real affinity for libraries and uh. The hang on, Trinity College Library. So one of the, the coolest places we went to this summer in Ireland was uh, Trinity College in, um, in Dublin. And this was one of the coolest things that I ever wanted to see my entire life. And it was amazing to be able to walk through there. Um, let's see if I can open image new tab. I mean, it is it is the most fictional library you could ever imagine in real life. And now they're doing some construction here, so it wasn't it wasn't as beautiful as it is here. But like, I just I just have this thing, right? I love books. I love being around books. And one day in my next house, I want to build an incredible library that uh, would look somewhat like this. So with all that out of the way, my wife took me to this really cool place, um, not too far from us. And it's called the Rare Books Bar. And you walk up and you walk up and you go to this phone booth over here on the corner and you got to say the password to get in. Right. And so it's kind of like uh, the Ministry of Magic or whatever in Harry Potter. You uh, you say the the magic words and then this door opens up over here. Right. So I love that. First off, that that just makes me super happy. And then you walk in and let me see if they have pictures of where we sat. So we sat in like the library part, which was super cool. Maybe does this show it? Yeah. So it was this side. Um, and so it's just a wall of books and it just looks like, like a, a bar version of Trinity college. And oh man, just had the coolest time there. I really, yeah, this is the side we sat on. I really appreciated her doing that. That, that totally stroked, stroked me in the right place. If you want to think of it that way. Um, so yeah, that that was the highlight of my weekend. Let's see, if there's any other cool pictures? Yeah, yeah, this is the side we sat on for sure. Uh, that was the table we sat at. In fact, and my wife, she's so funny. She ordered literally the entire table's worth of food. <laughs> and we we're just like, I think it was like three appetizers, but they came out and they were enormous portions. So it was our entire table, and we just thought that was so funny. So either way, that was uh, that was a really cool place. So I appreciate her for thinking of me in that. So I hope your weekend was as good as mine. I'll put it that way. Uh, Goran is here. David's here. Wes, good to see you. Uh, Michael's here. Tug is here. Howdy, dude. Glad you took time away from cracking necks and cashing checks. Dave says, I, I, I truly want to see Trinity. It's on my wife and mine's bucket list as well. Um, yeah, dude. Trinity College was like, it was it was epic. Like right in the middle of uh, Dublin. Um, just just as cool as, as could be, right? Peter's here. Brian's here. Randy's here. Brian says, can you read one of the books there? Uh, dude, yeah. I saw people pull them off the wall and acting like they were going to read it or whatnot. Um, nobody actually did. You know, Ain't nobody got time for that, but they uh, they totally did uh, play around like that. Hey, I saw this video this weekend. Uh, I had to share this with you, okay? Um, in fact, I'm going to have to plug in my headphones to watch this with you. Hang on. I saw this this weekend, and I was like, this is the most ridiculous thing, but Last week, I mentioned how um, there's this whole like online community of uh, Forex people, right, who who want to talk about how much money they make all the time. Right. And um, oh, my gosh, let, let, let me let me just I'm going to play this video and I'm going to stop and give commentary because this. Oh, my goodness. OK. Charges me about thirty thousand dollars per session. Zimbabwe dollars or American dollars. It's all good. 
There you go, bro. Looking out, my guy. And uh, it is what it is, but it's for my safety. I that transaction looks more fake than iPhone from Sheen. So I made sixty-one thousand dollars yesterday. Another statement that sounds more fake than Mercedes-Benz from Timu. If bro makes any more fake statement, we will have a Timu warehouse full of fake statements. And when you make money like that every single day, you gotta be careful what you do. I can't go to no regular barber shop. Why not? You don't seem like you make money like that, at least not legally. So instead, I have a barber come in, and you know, that's what I do for my safety. This does not make sense. It is cheaper to pay five security guards to take you to a regular barber then pay 30,000 to a baba for safety. People know I made 60 to 100K a day. I got a target on my back. You know? Nobody knows until you told us and we don't even believe you. For my safety, I got to be protected. I got to be careful. I can't just be at no barbershop where people are coming in and out. Gee, subscribe on the motorbike. This brother is the Lulu Pro Max. He thinks he is Michael Jackson with skin made out of diamonds. You know, I pay the price. Half that trade goes into the cut. Get this about every four days and life is good. I am offended that this brother thinks I am stupid enough to believe that he spends 2.7 million dollars a year on haircut. You have insulted my intelligence and I will avenge my brain's dignity. Okay, 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 okay. So this is what I was talking about last week. There's this whole like subculture $1, of, yes. uh, of uh, Forex trading gurus of which he is clearly one of those. I don't know who this person is. He looks like um, Post Malone, right? I, I don't know who this guy is. I don't know why in the world he thinks that he is, uh, <laughs> he's in so much danger <laughs> that he has to, uh, that he, well, first off, I would love to have a barber come to my house every, every time I need one, right? One of my pet peeves in life is going to sit and wait at a barber shop. I don't know if you've ever done that. You probably have but I cannot stand it, right? I don't want to sit there for two hours where you're cutting other people's hair and you finally get to me, right? So I found this place close to me where it's got a really cool vibe. It's um, it's uh, it's very rock and roll. They, uh, they have like rock and roll posters all over the walls. They have arcade machines in there. They give you beer when you walk in. And I'm like, okay, this kind of place I can vibe with. But for a hot minute, I'm, I was actually like calling around trying to figure out who would come to my house to cut my hair and my son's hair because i hate dealing with that right and this guy claims this guy claims <laughs> this guy claims every four days who needs a haircut every four days i don't even like trim my neck hairs every four days this guy claims every four days he's paying this guy thirty thousand dollars to come cut his hair i can tell you you could probably find an incredible stylist maybe even a master barber to come drive to your house for 250 bucks. I'm just saying. You ain't gotta spend 30 grand. Give me a freaking break. And then he's claiming that he makes 60 to $100,000 a day. Mm, let's just do the math here. What's 60 plus 100 divided by two? Okay, so it averages 80 grand a day, right? So you're telling me, you're telling me every four days, you're like, you know what? I need to blow at least nearly half of that and haircuts no 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 Gorn 30k a day 30 30k a session 30k for 15 minutes yeah it's not 30k a year no 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 no. okay so so let's just do the math here I think there's like 250 trading days so let's say he makes eighty thousand dollars times 250 trading days that's uh I, I need to add or I need to multiply that by 100 uh surely it'd be more than that hang on so 80,000, right? Times, I didn't multiply by 1,000, times uh, 250 trading days. So, so, dude's claiming he's pulling down 20 million bucks a year. So, he's got the kind of cash to throw around for $30,000 haircuts. Give me a freaking break. This is the kind of stuff that drives me crazy. And I wish, I wish, wish, wish that we didn't live in a culture that social media promotes these type of people, right? Because, like, I don't know anything about this guy, but he looks disgusting. He he clearly is being around wealthy people. Um, you can tell real wealth versus wannabe wealth, right? You you can tell the difference, right? I'm sure you can tell the difference between our two videos here. Um, but you know what? 
I'm not making $20 million a year day trading Forex. So what do I know? What do I, maybe I should be listening to him. Uh, Max is here. Jean-Louis here. Glad to see you guys. Sorry, I took a, a detour. I had, to, I saw this video and I was like, I got to talk about that. Davis, this is great. That channel is really funny too. I like that a lot. Uh, Brian says, still getting the sports clips cut. Absolutely. I should have him on. Not, listen, I don't want to have this guy on. Whoever he is, I have no desire to promote him, what he's doing. Uh, not 30K a year, exactly. You know you got suckered into a vast wasteland of time suck on this one. Yeah. <laughs> 20 mil. Give me a break. I cut my own hair. It's free. Dude, during COVID, I was cutting my own hair too. And man, what a shit show that was. <laughs> show me his tax return uh guaranteed i'm not taking financial advice from some tool who claims to pay 30k for a haircut i'm with randy cut my own yeah maybe rich but he's not wealthy i don't know if he's either of those but either way let's get right into it uh right into the trading room today welcome to the outlier trading room this is smart trading made simple save time make money start winning with less risk there we go and Come on. And for those of you who don't know me, my name is Christopher Yule. I've twice been awarded top 100 people in finance. I've been successfully trading since 2009. I am a partner with Outlier, and this is my style of trading um, using Outlier. And I like to call it the golden ticket trading strategy. So before we get started, just want to do a quick recap on how Outlier works. It's a four step process. Number one, Outlier monitors how investors are reacting to changing market conditions, news, price movements, and the economy. Number two, Outlier determines if investors are uh, acting irrationally, fearful, or greedy, and by how much. Number three, Outlier gives buy and sell signals when those irrational extreme or irrational behaviors reach an extreme. Number four, allowing you to get in the, into the stock move before the Outlier move happens. So, uh, I just want to make sure that we, you know, are, are on the same same uh, same foot on how Outlier works. Uh, and then we have today's member highlight i wanted to showcase uh this maybe on a daily basis going forward because i feel like there's so much going on in our discord at this point we can absolutely uh do this on a daily basis so I'll pull this over here uh dave shared something with me today but i gotta click the bumper to make it official no that was not the right bumper this is the bumper all right dave shared with me something cool um Something something about our friend Dave here. Dave actually was training for the 2012 London Olympics in pistol shooting. Isn't that cool? Uh, but Dave was telling me how over the weekend he got the trading in the zone book. Well done, Dave. Gold star for that. Um, and so he wanted to talk about some of the things he's taken away from it. The key that Mark, the author, is getting at is to remove the emotion from trading decisions. Absolutely. Whether they line up or they don't. They meet all the rules or they don't. The bottom line is to trust the process uh, and that the results making money is irrelevant and will happen automatically if you adhere to your process. Yes, exactly. In 2012, he was a pistol shooter in contention for the London Olympics. A uh, precision shooting was innate, was the same philosophy. You do not shoot for score, you shoot for the perfect execution. In a typical match, he would raise his pistol to shoot 200 times, yet only fire 60 shots. I recognized a break in the shot process and stopped. Once recentered mentally, physically, then would it begin the next shot process. The process removed the emotion from shooting. We were not excited, aroused, sad, or distracted in any way. We focused on an individual shot process. When everything worked, we shot. The shot was released uh, released unconsciously. We didn't consciously pull the trigger because the process led to that moment of shot release and almost always a perfect 10x. When anything in the shot process was forced, your results were less than optimal. This process is the same process that every elite athlete focus on and every elite trader, I put it that way. It's never about the win. It's about the perfect setup and execution every single time. Olympic athletes, especially in the shooting disciplines, don't compete for the win. They compete for the perfect execution and the gold medal is what follows. Very, very well articulated there, Dave. He continues on. The same applies in trading. We have our targets given to us by outlier. Not every recommendation may be a viable target, but that is where the process starts to help narrow down what's viable. Using the golden ticket trading strategy, we can focus on narrowing down which target is the best to take the shot on. Well said, Dave. I love this. From there, the evaluation of the options using the methodology for which options have liquidity and are priced appropriately. All of this is truly technical and unemotional. It, yes, without a doubt. Like as you have seen many, many times in all the trades that I place, I have said so many times, if it sets up and you don't take the trade, you have invalidated your trading model. 
And as you've seen, if it doesn't set up, I don't even look any further, right? If I see one step in the chain, if one link in the chain is broken, I'm not even interested. I immediately disregard the trade. If the recommendations filter all the way down through, you release the shot. You have set yourself up for success, no matter, uh, no different than Michael Jordan throwing a three-point shot, perfect execution, positive results will follow. This is a very different style of trading, but it's, uh, but this is a far more elite level than most people realize. Thank you. Following all the rules is always hard, but it speaks, speaks to the success of the program. Very, very cool. And then Dave also recommends Zen in the Art of arch Archery. Uh, if you haven't already picked that up. So Dave, thank you so much for uh, sharing all that and allowing me to uh, to share this with the outliers. So with that out of the way, let's continue on. Be sure you share your stories in the Discord just like Dave did because the first rule of outlier is you tell everybody about outlier and hit the like button down below, right? I know you're already subscribed, so go ahead and do me a favor. We wanna tell everybody uh, out on YouTube how good this is, how great outlier is. So you can do that by just tapping that like button. It doesn't cost you a penny. So the golden ticket trading strategy always starts with the market. And it's going to let the market tell us which direction it's going with a 10 over the 20 price over the 50 on the spy. So let's go to the spy real quick. Let me zoomy zoomy. There we go. And that's what we have here. We have the 10 over the 20 prices over the 50. Now this blue line up here, I marked as a new all time high. We're not quite there yet. If it closes above this order block, that order block disappears. And typically you would consider that um, uh, support in the future. So we'll see how that pulls out. Um, but as of right now, we do have the 10 over the 20 price over the 50. I went ahead and marked that red line on the 50 as well. Uh, Cause not all that long ago, we were considering going short, but we didn't. And in the process, we didn't lose any money, right? Cause we followed the rules. Let's catch up on the chat here. Um, Michael, finger red number one. Sometimes the emojis don't pull through, but that's all right. I get it. Dave says, happy to share. Very cool. So the market is absolutely trending bullishly. Um, and then we go to the next step here, which is to look at the market breadth. Now, the market breadth is how many stocks are on the bull list. Go back over here. How many stocks are on the bull list as a percent of total? And that list today shows, as it loads, 38 uh, new on the list today, 831 total. Now, what that looks like is this. Let me go to today. That's not today. This is today. It looks like we may have hit that bottom. We may have legitimately hit the breadth bottom. And now it is starting to turn back up. This may cross back over as soon as tomorrow. It may. I'm not going to pressure it. I'm not going to force it. I'm just saying it may turn back up tomorrow. And we might have bullish breadth. But as of right now, when we look at the master key, which uh, unlocks the rest of the trading strategy, the spy signal is actually set to sell. The spy signal is actually set to sell. I forgot that part. Now, one thing to keep in mind. a sell with a uh, upturned overlay is not a sell to go short it is a sell to close okay i lost a lot of money figuring this out um middle of last year but a sell within a red downtrend overlay you can consider that a strong sell as in a sell to open okay sell to go short in this case that would have been a sell to close so it might reverse course. I don't actually know. And I'm not going to force it either, right? Because with the golden ticket trading strategy, as I mentioned before, we follow the rules. So spy signal is currently bearish. The market trend is currently bearish. Market breadth, I'm sorry, market trend is currently bullish. Market breadth has turned and might be heading bullish in the near future. And then if we did find a stock to trade, we'd look at that sector breadth. So we won't be trading today, but I did want to um, work today on did want to work today on how important charts are in using the 10, 50, and 20-day moving averages. So that's where we're going to spend the, the bulk of today's trading room on. And I'm going to go ahead and clean this up a little bit because I only want to focus on those. Um, so I'm going to take off everything that's not that drawings. There we go. Okay. So I have traded every moving average you can think of. And... These are the three that I landed on. And I'll tell you where I learned that from. So Steve Burns, one of my mentors, um, wrote this incredible book. Let me grab it real quick. Like 
like I said, I uh, I live in a library. I spend ninety percent of my time in a library. Where and all my trading books are right in this area. New Trader Rich Trader. Here we go. This book is a fantastic book. If you don't have it already, go get it. It's not expensive at all. In fact, this one's probably better on Audible than um, the Complete Turtle Trader. This is one you want to get, New Trader Rich Trader. Yes, you can consider it, consider me a book salesman. It costs me nothing. It might cost you eight bucks. Who cares? Um, this book has so much good information on it. I, I don't know why I don't have tabs in it, but I have lots of markings in it. Um, and I wish I could point you to the page where it's on. But in this book, uh, Steve, so Steve, so so we're all familiar with the Rich Dad Poor Dad, right? Um, this is like a, a play on that new trader, rich trader. So rich trader is this gentleman that lives in a, a you know big, beautiful house. And uh, new trader is a uh, a young gentleman who, you know, comes into his life and he talks about how, uh, you know, whenever he trades and, and his style of trading, very similar to how we trade, by the way. And new trader is, you know, so excited. New trader wants to spend all of his cash on a single trade. New trader wants to do everything he can. He wants to jump in um, and just go for it on, on every single day. Man, I tell you what, I, I kind of want to put this in my, uh, I know I have this on Audible. I might just put it in this afternoon and start listening to it again. Because there's so much you can take from a book like this. It's not just a read it once and move on. It's a read it once, enjoy it. And then as you've progressed in your trading journey from new trader to rich trader, like I've done, you will catch so much at different points in your life by rereading the same book, um, which is why you have a library in the first place. So you can go back and visit those books different times in your life and see, oh yeah, that's that I've learned through one thing or another, how I got from A to Z. Um, anyway, in this book, talked about the uh, 10 50 20, which is um, my like number one trend rule. And that's what I want to discuss with you today. Why the 10 50 20? So the 10 period here, I'm going to, I'm going to share with you a cheat sheet that Steve gave me. And I want you to take a screenshot of this so you can keep it forever. So let's break this down. The five day moving average is a super strong momentum and you could use it as support or resistance if it if it uh, holds or breaks. Now, let's look at a five period moving average because a five period moving average is tight. It's really, really right on top of the market. OK, so if we look at a five period moving average, that's the gray line right here. As you can see, I mean, that is like super tight, but it also gives you a lot of good information here. Right. So let's look at the spy in May. It crossed over the five and at no point in time did it even touch the five until here so if i add this on my other drawings come back into let me remove this one actually i can just use this one here didn't even touch the the five period from this point to this point so the spy went up nearly 20 bucks almost four percent in the span of 13 days now here's the thing is that even though it didn't touch that period right if you're following this if you're following this trades trends like this are are very unusual right it is very common like this right here just a couple weeks later to see a lot of activity around the five period right because i mean consider it this way if you are giving something the shortest leash possible how often is that going to just like bump into you right you know those those retract those uh this is a really good example you know those retractable uh dog leashes right um I, I don't have a dog at my house. My wife can't stand the smell of pets, so we don't have pets. Um, but the my my parents have a pug, and this dude is fat. Oh my gosh, he's so fat! Like I don't I don't know how his little tiny legs can support how just morbidly obese he is. Um, corpulent is the word to describe uh, him, and his name is Spike. So uh, they have one of those stretchy leashes, right? And um, anytime we go to our lake house, my parents go with us there or Spike always comes with us. And, you know, we have a good old time. Um, but uh, so so Spike has one of those stretchy collars, the stretchy leashes. So imagine you give him five feet. OK, if you give him five feet and you lock it down, Spike's going to run and hit it and come back. He's going to run and hit it and come back. He's going to run and hit it and come back. And he's going to turn you. And he's going to be like, bro, what the heck? Why are you only giving me five feet of, of room here? OK. I want to go. If you want to come with me, you need to step up your speed. OK, so that's kind of the case here with the five period moving average, right? It's going to go and come back and go and come back and go and come back and go and come back. And it's going to be really frustrating. 
But at the same time, if it goes above, you've got a really strong trend. Now imagine Spike's on a run and you're on a run and you're both running together. And then Spike, you know, he's so big and fat, he can't run any further. So he's like, okay, I'm gonna take a break. And he just sits down, okay? That's almost exactly what happened right here. And then you've got times where you're running with Spike, but he's going faster, you're going faster, and you keep bumping into that, the end of the leash and things like that. And it's not as easy to run with, okay? So a five period moving average does show you an inc incredibly strong trend, but you're gonna bounce without a doubt. It's going to be a lot more chaotic around that period, right? Cause you're just not giving it any room to run. Now let's say that you gave Spike a 10 foot leash, okay? In fact, let's clean this up a little bit more. Let's say you give Spike a 10 foot leash, just like you would maybe follow the 10 period moving average. So it crossed over the 10 period moving average here, didn't even come close to it, not even looking at it. And then we get to here and you can see Spike had to sit down, the market had to sit down and it pulled back. Now the 10 is your indicator of the short term trend, right? Where this is strong momentum, super strong on the five day, the 10 day is a short term trend. If you're moving above the 10 day, that means the short term trend is up. If it's below the 10 day, it means the short term trend is down. But then you can go for potentially days or weeks in a strong trend with nothing happening, right? You can go for while this one here was flirting with the the uh, the five period so much, it didn't even like wasn't even messing with the 10 period for all that time. And then you can see the short term trend here changed, reversed course and went down. The short term trend changed, reversed course and went up and down and back up, right? It's not to say that this is a guaranteed uh, end all be all, but it does tell you where the short term trend is. Um, I mean, I've told the story a million times, but I, I love it. I was I was upstairs in one of my extra bedrooms uh, on the laptop doing a Skype call with Steve and Steve said, OK, Chris, is this stock trending up or down? And I'm like. I don't know. He's like, how do you not know? And I was like, how do you know if it's trending? And Steve was like, how do you not know this? And I'm like, Steve, listen, the way that I used to trade was just sell calls, sell puts. It doesn't matter what it was. But at no point in time did I learn charting. And so he's like, Chris, listen, the first thing you got to do is put a 10 period exponential moving average on your chart. You put a 10 period mo moving average on your chart. And if the stock is above, it's trending up, Chris. If the stock is below, it's trending down, Chris. It doesn't get much easier than that. And I'm like, oh. Listen, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much. I have learned a lesson today. Putting that one in the uh, the old long term memory. Not uh, not going to go against that. Um, and so that's that's the ten period. That's your short term moving average. So then, let's talk about the twenty period moving average. So the twenty period, I always just you know blue, black, and red. It can be any color you want. Um, I would I would suggest if you're following along with the trades we make, just use the same colors. That way you don't have to think about one or the other. Blue I use as 10, black I use as uh, the 20, and 50 I use as red. And so these are all exponential moving averages. And I, I should talk about that real quick. A simple moving average is literally you're taking 10 periods of data, dividing by 10, that's your average price, okay? An exponential moving average takes into account where price is at today. So it gives further weight on the most recent of the days and less weight on the further of the days. So if there's 10 periods, the first one, two, three are going to have significantly more weighting in where the moving average is versus the last uh, nine, eight, seven. And because of that, your moving average is a lot more dynamic. Your moving average moves a lot faster. So uh, let's take a side trip real quick and do a 20 period simple moving average. And this will be yellow. Let me make it bigger. Thickness. We want it ultra thick. There we go. So you can see the 20 period simple moving average and the 20 period exponential moving average. They they move a lot differently, don't they? Right? These are both measuring 20 periods. Keep that in mind. Both of these are measuring a 20 period moving average. But you can see how much longer it took for the reversal to take place here, right? So let's say um, price comes down. You can see the black line, the exponential moving down faster than the simple. Price goes back up. The exponential is already moving up while the simple is still flattening and changing and then finally going back up. You see why that makes a difference, right? I want to know as a trader what's happening today. 
or I have a significantly higher recency bias by I want to know what's going on right now in the market, what's going on right now in this trend, and not so much what's going on 20 days ago here. Okay, so looking at this, you can see just how much faster the exponential reacts than the simple. And there are periods of time where they pretty much do the same thing, right? When it's in a beautiful trend like that. But here's another example, right? Uh, 20 period, it's moving down. Price is below it. It's moving down. Reverses course, flattens out. It was above. And then once again, turns down. And during this time, the simple moving average is, is uh, just waddling itself down, smoothly working. And then boom, it pops back up. And the 20 period's like, oh, I guess I'll flatten out for a while and then come back up, right? You can see November 1st, 2023 was the date that this changed direction. This didn't change direction really until November 13th. So you had a two week head, head start on the change in direction on the exponential versus the simple, okay? So that's the difference in exponential and simple and just go exponential. You don't have to do any calculations. It's, it's just one button on your chart. So the 20 period is your intermediate term. That's the way I like to think of it. Your 10 period being your um, your short term, right? And your 20 period being your intermediate term. Your 20 period, you can think about it, is like a month, right? If there's four weeks, if there's four weeks in a month, each trading day, let's say, is or each trading week is five days, that's 20 times five is essentially a month. So this is your last month of data, okay? And then if you want to look at a 10 period, the short term, that's your last two weeks of data. Does that make sense? Right? You're looking at uh, a month of data here. And on the short term, you're looking at two weeks of data. And then the 20 period here, according to Steve, says a reversion to the mean after an extended trend. So for example, we find an extended trend right here, right? From November, 2023 up till April, 2024. How many times did it cross the 20? One, one, in that entire movement, one time did it cross under the 20 or the reversion to the mean as Steve described it, and then it continued on. So like I say, that I use as my intermediate term. And then the 50 day I use as my long term. So the 50 day exponential is if you think of it this way, right? We've got two weeks, two weeks is the 10 day. One month is the 20 day. And then you've got basically one quarter, two and a half months, give or take. You've got one quarter for the long term trend. So you're looking at two weeks, you're looking at one month, and you're looking at one quarter in a nutshell. I'm rounding here, of course. So this is your longer term trend. And you can see during this long trend here, it didn't even come close. It went over the 50 and it went for ages, came back down, back up, down, back up. And then went another ages and then back down and then back up. And a lot of people trade on this line only, right? Because if they want to do as little as possible, bro, trade in the 50 day is where it's at, right? If it closes above, go long. Wait, 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 still wait, 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 still waiting. Wait, 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 finally get out, right? It went from 397, touched it a couple times, but didn't cross under it up to 442. So a $50 move on the spot without having to do it, without having to do anything. Right. A lot of people like to trade like that, but there's a lot of volatility that comes with it. Right. Because there's going to be choppy periods. Right. Where it's above, below, above, below, above, below, where you're actually bleeding out. Right. And these are frustrating times. But in a longer term trend model, that works great. Uh, Peter asks, so how does EMA work on an hourly chart? It's the same thing. Right. We can go to a we can go to an hourly chart. Right, it's still looking at the last 50 hours of data, each candle being one hour. In fact, this does get a little wonky on the hourly charts because the last candle is a half hour candle. So a lot of people, instead of trading with the one hour charts, actually trade the 65 minute charts. And then a full day is a full candle um, for every hour, every 65 minute period. So Peter, if you ever wanted to, to shift from a 60 minute chart to a 65 minute chart, you would have consistent uh, sizes for all the candles. Either way, neither here nor there. We're looking at the uh, 65 minute chart. So it's taken the last 65 candle, 65, I'm sorry, the last 50, 50 candles on the 65 minute chart and plotting it like that, giving more relevancy to the more recent periods than the uh, older periods. Go to five minute chart, right? 
Same thing there. So the way that these work together is you stack the 10, the 20, and the 50. When all three are stacked to higher, right? When all three are moving on top of each other, that is a bullish trend. And a strong bullish trend, you'll see a widening of those moving averages, okay? So here's a really good example, right? A strong trend, they can get wider and wider and wider. Look at the, look at the width right here, the width right here, and then look at the width over here, right? This one's a little bit thicker, but this one's got a lot thicker. And then you can see how they compress, right? When the trend is not as strong, you can see that width between the moving averages start to compress, 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 and may even cross over, may even cross over. You can see it expand and then compress, expand and then compress, expand and then compress and then, uh, and then turn bearish, right? And then cross over. So it is a mathematical fact, and I don't like to deal in subjectives. I like to deal in facts, right? If you have the 10 period over the 20 period, price over the 50 period, you are in a bullish trend. Cannot be refuted because it's math, right? If my two week moving average is higher than my one month moving average and price is above the average over the last quarter, price is all moving direction uh, in, in the upward direction right? It's irrefutable. It is math. But that doesn't mean it's going to last, right? A lot of people think that just because something is in a trend now means it will be in a trend forever. Well, clearly that's not the case, right? Let's go to GE. We, we saw GE the other day and I, I kept this one because I was like, that is the most ridiculous trend I have seen in a while, right? Look at this trend on GE. It's a monster, right? It went from around $86 in November almost at a 90 degree vertical angle at one point to 161. So it basically doubled in that time frame from November to June. And how many times do you see a 10, 50, 20 cross back? Put it in the chat. I want to know how many times in this bullish trend right here, do you see a 10, 15, 10, uh, 10, 20, 50 cross back? How many times do you see the bullish trend reverse? How many times do you look at it and say, oh, maybe it's going to be bearish? I mean, the answer is clearly, clearly zero. Yes, thank you, Sebastian. The answer is clearly zero. At no point in time would you ever look at this chart and say, hmm, I'm bearish. Why the frick would you do that? Why would you look at this chart? Trust me, I've done this. Story coming inbound. Why would you ever look at this chart and say, bro, it's just gone too far. It's got to turn around, right? Oh my gosh. I, I, there was a point in time where I used to be a lot more active following uh, traders on Twitter. And I can't tell you how many times I saw people say, it has to turn around here. It must turn around here. I am starting to buy puts because I am telling the market what it's going to do. Who the frick do you think you are, right? How about instead of trying to um, stop the ocean, how about instead of putting up one roadblock uh, like to uh, to stop a flood, you uh, you grab a boat and you jump on the waves, right? Why don't you go grab a surfboard and ride it in instead of trying to push the water back out? Why don't you just ride it on in? Because it's in a beautiful trend. Why would you ever go against this? So like I said, story inbound. Um, stories are great learning vehicles, especially when I can relate to how much money I lost when I learned these. <laughs> uh, and I can't tell you what year it was because I honestly don't remember. But I think it was, I'll find it here. This is my gold, my gold story. Oh, there it is. That had to have been it. Had to have been. Look at this downtrend. Look at this downtrend, right? That is the most obvious downtrend I may have ever seen in my entire life. As Randy says, trees don't grow into the sky. At some point, they're going to reverse. Yeah, well said. That is a very obvious downtrend. But yours truly thought he was smarter than the market. Yours truly said, you know what? It has to go back up. I was following these traders on Twitter, which clearly lost me a ton of money. But at the time, they were saying it has to go back up. 
it has to go back up, right? And as gold is plummeting to zero, <laughs> practically, you know, the shiny stuff going from, I don't know, $2,000 an ounce to zero is what it felt like. I'll put it that way. It's going down and it's going down and it's going down day after day after day. And I'm like, let's go. I'm going to buy some uh, buy some calls here. Well, not that big. I'm going to buy some calls here. I'm going to buy some calls here. I'm going to buy some calls here because, bro, when that turns around, ooh-wee, I'm going to be making so much money. And of course, down and down and down and down it goes. But this was before I worked with Steve. <laughs> this is before I learned my lesson here about how a trend works. And this is how I trade now, which is I will never, ever trade counter trend. And I don't think you should either. Doesn't mean you're always going to win, but you're at least moving in the direction of the market, right? If you are at least moving in the direction of the market, you are setting yourself up for so much success. But if you're trying to steamroll the market, if you try to step out in front of the train, right? The train is clearly going south down the tracks here. And Chris decided to throw all his luggage on, right? Uh, step on the train and just, here we go. We're going to go the other way, right? We're going north. Come on. And then the train just ran me the hell over. You don't have to do that. Nobody should ever have to do that. And you don't have to when all you got to do is throw on three moving averages and you don't have to overcomplicate things. You don't have to pay $30,000 to get a haircut and you don't have to make it super complicated to tell which direction the market is going. Three moving averages. It'll take you all at three seconds. In fact, you could probably teach this to your children and then they will be able to tell you which direction a trend is going, right? And then there will be times where it's kind of in the middle here, right? Where you've got the 10 is over the 20, um, price is over the 50, right? You've got some times like that. And then look at that. It seemed to reverse a little bit. But as Randy said, a, a tree doesn't grow forever, right? And so that's why we, we intermix the short, the intermediate, and the long term together. Because if the short term is now uh, above the intermediate term, that's a good sign. If the uh, price is above the long term, that's a good sign. So you throw all those together, you're looking in the right direction. Was this useful? Was this helpful? Right? I try my very best to make sure that I can relate these to you because somebody took the time, and I'm so grateful, to teach me everything about trading. And so while we don't have any trades to make, I'm going to do my very best to teach you everything that I know about trading. And I'm going to do it in bite-sized lessons like this. So if this is useful, let me know in the chat, because I really want to make sure that we're all on the same page here. Were you in the options that you couldn't hold forever? Bro, I was in the options that I couldn't hold for the next two weeks. They were going to expire. Like, that's how stupid I was. <laughs> that's how stupid I was, Randy. <laughs> Dave says, this is super useful. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, cool. Um... So we'll wrap it there. And, and before we go real quick, I just I want to do this every day because I really want you to know that we appreciate you so much for being an outlier, right? We literally could not do this without you. And we want to pay you back every single day by helping you save money or save time, make money, start winning with less risk. And don't forget, uh, we will be raising the price on our annual plan at the end of the month. So if you don't already have the annual plan, please do yourself a favor. Go get it. It's literally 82 cents a day. Um, if you're not doing that, you're definitely missing out. Peter says, very useful. So thank you all so much for coming to today's trading room. Uh, glad that I could help out. And we'll be uh, right back here tomorrow. And I hope you'll be here too. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this with somebody else. Talk soon.